Okay, so Minis Forum have sent me this mini PC and it's a really good price, 299 with a Ryzen 5 7545. So let's have a look at it. So very compact, we've got a three and a half mil jack and a couple of USBs on the front and a power switch. On the side, we've got nice cooling. Uh, on the back, we've got more cooling. And also on the other side, yeah, lots of room for cooling and it's a plastic case which is part of the reason they've been able to keep the cost down, I guess. So 19 volt power supply, 2.5 gig LAN, HDMI full size, display port, USB 4 connection, and a couple of USB A's. And interesting, the inbox, never had this before, but they've sent me a couple of spare feet. So it looks like that's how we're going to get access to the insides of this. So the power supply they've sent as a decent sized barrel jack, 19 volt. 3.42 amp so a total of 64.98 watts figure eight cable for the power supply full size hdmi cable and a monitor mount so this is so that you can mount it on the back of a monitor using the visa connections so these will be 10 centimeters apart but also seven and a half centimeters as well which is very common sizes and these two are the bit that connects to the mini pc so the seven and a half centimeter ones line up with the back of this Y-Maxit monitor. And then that would mount onto there. This is only a 14 inch monitor. Obviously you could have a much bigger monitor. And even at this low cost, we're getting something which is quite significantly better than a Steam Deck. Sixth generation compared to third generation. Six cores versus four cores on the Steam Deck. 12 threads versus eight on the Steam Deck. Clock speeds. So 2.4 goes up to 3.2, and when you turbo it, 3.5 on the Steam Deck compared to 4.9 on this one. And the GPU, so 1 gigahertz on the Steam Deck, because it's a custom one, uh, 0.8 gigahertz on this Radium 740, but it turbos much higher, so 2.5 gigahertz compared to 1.6 on the Steam Deck. Also supports AMD FSR frame generation. So the feet just pull off. And we've got four Phillips screws to unscrew. And let's try and pop this up. Right, is anything connected yet? Yeah, there's a wire connected. So there's a fan at the top here. There's a couple of thermal pads for the NVMe drive, so I can see there's space for two NVMe drives in there. And it's a Kingston drive, a terabyte or 1024 gigabyte. Does it mean I'm going to have to take these bits out? Right, let's take the fan out. And it definitely looks like I have to take these screws out. So there's a cable there as well. Oh, another fan. Okay, so the RAM's not accessible unless you were to take the fan off. I'm not going to go further and take the fan off. But I would say the RAM's probably soldered on. We'll see what it says in the, in the readme bit. So let's pop that back in. Windows 11 is all pre-installed and I'm just running all the updates now. I've checked on the Minis Forum site and the memory is on board, so it's not something you can change yourself unless you have some incredibly good soldering skills. Maximum of 32 gig. I think mine's got 16, but we'll see in a minute. So it's finished all its updates, and as you can see, I've been installing some games. I've also tried SteamOS on it, which works great, but I'll show that later on. So let's have a look at the specs that I've been sent. So about your PC, terabyte of storage, 2 gig is given to the graphics card, so it's onboard graphics, and 16 gig of RAM, Ryzen 5 7545, and it comes with Windows 11 Pro. So let's have a look at their website, and as you'd expect, it feels really snappy. So the RAM speed is 6400 megahertz, so up to 32 gig, but that's if you buy a 32 gig version. Up to 4 terabytes using the dual M.2 slots. Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. And it says USB 4 port PD power compatible. And I can confer that because I'm actually powering it from the USB at the moment. So there are some Cinebench scores if you want to go through those. Uh, 4.9 gigahertz is the maximum turbo. And they're comparing it here to an i5 12th gen. And it's performing considerably better. The integrated graphics are incredibly good on these AMD processors. More on that later. I have been playing some games on it. It talks about being very quiet, and I can definitely agree with that. It's right in front of me, about a foot away from me now. Uh, it's upside down because I've been playing around with NVMe drives. It is very, very quiet. So the three displays, uh, so I'm using HDMI, but you can also use the USB 4 as a USB-C output and also DisplayPort 1.4. 
all of those support 4K 120 and the HDMI and the USB-C support 8K 60 Hz. So 40 gigabits per second on the USB 4 socket. It's nice to see devices powered by USB-C. I would have liked to have seen another USB-C socket on it. It's 299 so there's only so much you can put on for that price. And there's a close-up of the connections. So I'm currently in Windows. If I press the Windows key you can see that I'm running Windows 11 at the moment. Motocross GP doesn't launch from Steam. Which is weird because it does work on SteamOS. I've found that older games tend to be more compatible with SteamOS than they are with Windows. So this is a game from 2014. Uh, but if I run the Precinct, which is a very recent demo. Now this is in Alpha at the moment, but I wanted to show how it basically just runs better in SteamOS. So I'll just jump in the car and go for a little drive. And I'll put SteamOS on the right hand side and Windows on the left. And actually there's not much in it. I would say occasionally SteamOS is slightly faster, but it's pretty much neck and neck. Although weirdly, when I first tried the Precinct on SteamOS, it just felt a bit smoother. And we'll also run this Tomb Raider benchmark. And as you can see from the FPS, uh, this is consistently better. I mean, it looks pretty much the same because both of them are around about 40 plus FPS. But yeah, it's constantly quicker on SteamOS. And we'll see at the end, there's a tally that adds it all up. So seven FPS faster on SteamOS, which is pretty significant. Weirdly, she does something different in both videos, that's odd. Okay, so yeah, 39.5 minimum on Windows, 42.4 minimum on SteamOS. Maximum was 50.5 compared to 60 on SteamOS. And the average overall, so what's that, 49 versus 54.4. So on that test, SteamOS wins. So SteamOS runs Windows games better than Windows in a lot of cases and I've seen that in other videos. But I've got a game here in the Epic Game Store and it's just easier to do it in Windows. So this was a free download recently, Dead Island 2. And I think it's really quite a recent game. Yeah, 2023. So I think this might be a big ask for integrated graphics to run, but we'll give it a go anyway. So they're asking for an i7 7th gen NVIDIA GTX 1060s, and that's minimum. I'll oh, give it a go anyway, I've downloaded it now. So I'm currently running the desktop at 1080, and if I go to advanced, you can see I put everything pretty much on low, and I've turned on super resolution, which seems to make it a lot sharper. And what have we got? I mean, it's going around about 20 FPS. Doesn't feel bad. Find a circuit breaker. The detail level, even on low, is pretty good. I need to try this on high with the GPU. Ah, here we go. This should work. I'll check out the bikes. Nice. So it's quite amazing how well this runs on an integrated GPU. It actually looks pretty decent. I mean, the draw distance is pretty big. Yes, the frame rate is pretty low but it's still enjoyable and it's still playable. Right, let's go for SteamOS. So on this drive, I've got SteamOS and this is a version that I used on a previous video on how to put SteamOS uh, on a mini PC. And it doesn't work with lots of mini PCs and it initially didn't work with this, but I put it back in the original computer that this was created with and updated it in the normal way and then it worked. So. Let's pop it in here. Now, I didn't bother to put the screws back in because actually this snaps together uh, really solidly. There we go, and remember that uh, fan cable. Now, I prefer to take the NVMe drive out because Windows 11 was created with Secure Boot and SteamOS isn't. So if I pop that in, so now it's the only drive There we go, see, just clicks back together. So I'm powering this with USB-C, not the official adapter, not that it makes any difference for this. Uh, so let's switch on 
And if you can hear noise in the background, it's just the washing machine. So I need to tap F7 to get the boot menu and go down to enter setup and we get this rather nice BIOS menu. So if we go into setup, the only thing I need to change is under security and secure boot and I'm going to disable it. But let's save this. So save and exit and save changes and exit and OK and let it boot up into SteamOS and we're in. Now SteamOS seems to be more compatible with older games than Windows is. So this Duke Nukem doesn't launch on my Windows 11 device. I think Flatout has trouble. GTA Vice City is a nightmare on Windows devices, such an old game. But uh, I also couldn't run this, Motocross GP. But I went into settings on SteamOS and properties and the first few things I tried didn't work, but I turned on Proton 10.0, uh, set the game resolution to 1280 by 720, and it actually works great now. I also changed some of the graphics settings. So I went for high, all of this is ticked, and 1280 by 720, and ticked windowed. Although I did find if it seems to get stuck, press the Windows key and then resume. So press B for back, and then press A, and it launches. But I think it gets stuck one more time, not ever in the gameplay. I'm gonna turn that volume down, that was a bit loud. So let's just jump into an instant race. And I think this time it sometimes gets stuck on the graphics. So I press the Windows key, and press B for resume, and then A, and there we are, back in. I think this is a 2014 game, but it looks cool and it plays brilliantly. And especially it's the starts. The starts are just amazing on this because there's so much going on, it's so crowded. Let's try and get on the inside line here. Oh, oh that wasn't a good start. So now I'm catch up. So yeah, this just runs perfectly. And I have turned on FPS, but um, actually it works in, in uh, big screen mode. It doesn't work in SteamOS mode, but you can see it's not struggling with, oh, it's not struggling with frames per second at all here. It's perfectly responsive. Really, really happy with that. Nice big jump to get a bit of a lead. Yeah, superb. I can play this. I can keep playing this. Right, let's stop that. So if you do want to run SteamOS on a mini PC, I've got my separate video on that. And I'm guessing that the latest version will just work with this because all I did was update it from that older system that I was using on another mini PC. So compatibility is improving all the time. Thanks very much to Minis Forum for sending me this to test. I'm super impressed, especially for the price. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.